Yes! But I am in Japan, I swear. Gundam. Very Japan. Books. Very Japan. They finally arrived, making me feel a little bit smarter. All right, so I asked you guys to ask me questions about my move in Japan because I figured maybe there are some and I'd like to talk about it. So let's do it. Number one, favorite thing about Japan. <laughs> it always has to boil down to one thing, doesn't it? As much as I'd like for that to be the case, just to make it easier to answer this question that everyone wants to know. Are you, are you moving to Japan? What do you like about it? Well, actually, there's many things that I like about Japan. I couldn't really... Okay, I'm bored. You didn't say one thing. Just say anime and shut the... <laughs> It's complicated. I just like it here, okay? What is something you just found out about Japan that you dislike? That's a good question. It's my first month here. Japan can do no wrong. Everything is amazing. I love it. Let me enjoy my honeymoon phase with this country, please. I'm sure there will be things. Oh, actually, I did find it strange how people ride on bicycles and the, on the sidewalk. But now that I have a bike, I kind of get it. <laughs> How do the people around respond to you guys? Like total strangers or some of them recognize you? Yes, I still get recognized, but it's usually foreigners living here that recognize me. I've never been approached by a Japanese person. Although sometimes strangers just start speaking English to me and I'm kind of confused by it. But I do think it's because people are nice and they want to practice English maybe, I don't know. Favorite food in Japan? Sushi. You can't go wrong with the fish here. It's... And as an epic pescatarian, I love the fish here. I get to enjoy the fish here. Very good fish here. UK? I can say it now because I don't live in you anymore. Your fish sucks. It's bad. What's up with that? Fish and chips? It's good. You're, that's okay. Other fish? No. How has Japan affected your lifestyle and content creation? Uh, have you been watching my channel? I'm a vlogger now. Thank you for all the support on the vlogs. I really appreciate it That's been, just been an undying love and support in the comments and uh, Normally, I'm a bit more private and I don't like to share too much stuff I like I hardly post on Instagram and social media anymore But it's been really fun to share this journey with you guys and uh, all the positivity just makes me want to do more so Thank you. What was the first Japanese dish you ate? I think uh, a rice ball? Tuna me a rice ball can't go wrong with that. What's the new hobby you want to get into? I look forward to build more Gundams while I'm here. I have this one that I bought also two years ago. That's gonna be epic. I like building Gundam. It's very fun and relaxing and you should try it. But I'm good on the new hobby front. I'm preoccupied learning Japanese as well. What was the most, oh my god, of course Japan moment you had so far? I think when we try to apply for the bank account, <laughs> I brought a whole folder of paper thinking they're gonna ask me for a bunch of weird papers and I will bring every single paper I have and that still wasn't enough. So that felt very, of course, Japan. <laughs> uh, how is the vending machine life? Oh, I love it. I love it. I have like 10 vending, different vending machines in my 100 meter radius and it's incredible. How are gyms in Japan? Did you bring your workout equipment? The nearest gym to me is... Well, I wasn't that impressed by it. It's not bad, but I prefer to work out at home. So I got myself a half power rack. I haven't gotten the weights yet, but I really look forward to use it. I know they have really good gyms here though. Connor told me they have amazing gyms with like pools and saunas and blame and a bam. Uh, I just... I don't think it's worth it for me. I enjoy the flexibility of working out at home. If not for Japan, where else would you have gone to? See, this is a really tough thing for us since we weren't sure if we were actually going to be able to move or not. We kept thinking like, okay, well, what do we do? Where do we go to here and where were they? And I think it was so stressful because it would always just come back to, but we still really want to go to Japan. Like that's what we want to do. You know, I'm sure there's other great options out there. Japan is what we wanted to move to. Having to prolong the process and making it so difficult to move here, it just reassured us even more that that's what we actually really wanted. People who complain about how hot it is in Japan doesn't know what it's like to live in Singapore. I've been to Singapore during uh, the humid place of things. There was a uh, thunderstorm, so it was super hot. But no, actually, you know what? Some people think it's hot it's so in hot Singapore though. and Japan. Seriously, but I'm starting to sweat. I didn't think I, I didn't even notice. Compare Japanese lifestyles to Swedish lifestyle. 
I could be wrong, but I do feel like Japanese and Swedish people are quite similar in a more reserved kind of way of acting. For better or worse, I feel very comfortable around that kind of people. <laughs> in America, it's completely normal to just start talking to strangers. That's super weird here, and it's super weird in Sweden. And I do like talking to strangers sometimes, having small talk. I don't mind that, but I feel more safe and comfortable in places like this. <laughs> I, don't, I don't know how else to describe it. Uh, I see Scandinavian products all over the place. I think they're, they have a similar sort of feel for interior design and furniture and very minimal and aesthetic taste. I like it. Will you make a camping video in Japan? Yes! I would love to go camping. I'm very excited to do that. We, me and Marcia watched this anime called Euro Camp, and I told Joey about it. And apparently, Joey went to that place they went in Euro Camp. You can camp on a, right in front of Mount Fuji, and it looks amazing. Me and Marcia love to camp. We usually tend to rent a van though to make it a little easier for us and the dogs. I think we'll be okay. I would love, I would love to do it. The biggest surprise about Japan, even after all your research, I, nothing has surprised me so far because I get this question a lot. And the thing is, we've been to Japan before, <laughs> like, many times. We would go every single year. We knew what we were getting ourselves into moving to this country. Basically, is what I'm trying to say. Hey, Pudes, so happy for you. Does anyone in Japan give you looks because you're a foreigner? People keep describing like the angry look. I just tend to avoid eye contact normally anyway because uh, out of a habit of not wanting to get recognized. So I don't really know what the look is that people describe, like the disappointed look. Uh, I haven't seen it yet. How is settling down there? Is it difficult? Now that I have my setup, I feel really good. Like having the chair again, got my desktop computer, my monitors, my camera. It, yeah, there's still tweaks and stuff I want to do, a lot of it, but the general basic is here and it feels amazing. I love, I love this office. I'm so happy with how it turned out. I, I really want to do a setup tour. What happened to the PC Linus sent you? <laughs> I've answered this so many times. That PC has been a blessing and a curse because I'm, I was obviously super happy and thankful for it. It was a funny meme and a video and a collab with Linus. <laughs> but people keep asking me about it. I gave it to a friend because it didn't fit my office at the time, the thing was huge uh, and I couldn't find any personal use for it and I couldn't justify sending my to Japan. I don't think it would fit this room either. It was super funny and I don't want to seem ungrateful because it's a great gift but the, you guys gotta start googling a little bit, come on. Is Marcia the Yoinki to your Spoinky? She is the greatest Yoinki, the most amazing Yoinki to my Spoinky. Wait, is this sexual? Did anime introduce you to Japanese culture? I think it probably did actually. I watched anime a lot when I was 18, but that's not what drew me to Japan. I didn't watch anime and was like, I want to go to Japan! Although I do remember the first time when I went here, I was a bit underwhelmed with how little uh, anime there is. <laughs> Like, there are places you can go, which is smack full, like Ak Akihabara. And yeah, I guess a lot of bookstores and convenience, they sell manga, but <laughs> it's, it's not a thing everywhere. What is an underrated or unspoken about feature of Japan that you really like? Uh, it's not underrated or underspoken, I think people still know about it, but people visit Japan to see all the quirky and wacky and all the crazy toilets and the vending machines, the conveniences, the amazing trains and all that. I I really like the more quiet, love for nature aspect of Japan and more spiritual side as well. I think it's uh, the softer side of Japan. You know, it has a wacky, crazy side, but also a softer side, which I really like. How's the weather there? It's great. It's nice to actually see the sun. Are you enjoying not being constantly recognized? Do you miss uh, the recognition at all? I never cared for attention. I always smile when I meet people. It, it genuinely like brightens me, me up. I mean that, but... And I think people recognize this in my vlogs that I can kind of let my guard down a bit in public. And that's also honestly part of the reason why we like Japan. No one knows who we are here. And I really enjoy that. <laughs> as much as I like meeting you guys, I do also enjoy that. But also don't misunderstand me. I, I always appreciate people coming and just saying hi for a bit. Have a lot of tattoos. Do you think I'll have a problem when to Japan? You'll be fine. They know foreigners have tattoos, there's nothing weird about it, but you won't be allowed to go in uh, most onsens. 
You can maybe find a private one or a foreigner friendly onsen. Usually should be okay, maybe. Uh, it's worth trying at least. Do you plan on staying in Japan for the rest of your life? <laughs> Bruh. Only thing I plan to do for the rest of my life is staying with Margia. So, <laughs> I don't make plans for the rest of my life. Actually, I will keep lifting for the rest of my life and reading. What's the defining moment that made you want to move to Japan? I think it was in 2018 when me and Marce had stayed there for a month and at the end of it we realized it was such a good time that we didn't want to really go back and we both just imagined hey what if we actually moved here for a while what, how, what would that look like would that work and we started looking into it a lot of things changed along that from that moment to where we are now but i'm just so glad to be here are you getting a jdm car or example nissan skyline i love the skyline it's a sexy ass vehicle i haven't seen one here actually but i did see a volvo 740 decked out here and i was like damn <laughs> that's what i should have i'm not big on cars to be honest like i know very little but being in Japan and trying to find the car that I want to buy here has really made me appreciate well-designed Japanese cars are. They're just incredible. How hard is it to not know anyone or do you know someone already? We know Joe and Aki, Tokidoki Emma. I met with Connor, he's really cool. There seems to be a ton of other YouTubers that I would love to meet here as well. Garnt, a fellow pizza crust hater, you know? I already know people and I look forward to meeting even more people. How is it socially being a resident in Japan? As a foreigner socially, I want to move, but I don't know. Now that I'm showing this whole process of moving and all that, I want people to be mindful that, yes, it was difficult to move here, especially with the pandemic happening, and I'm sure it'll be easier, but from what I hear, and most people that move here find it really difficult because of the work culture being so much harder than they think, or uh, really struggling because basically just working all the time and having very little money and yada yada yada. I don't think my vlogs are an accurate portrayal of what it's like uh, being a resident here. And visiting though, amazing, and you should definitely do it. Does Japan feel very crowded wherever you go? Uh, no. Not at all, actually. People are always moving. Tokyo is huge, so you always have to be aware of other people around you, no matter what, where you are or what you're doing. Um, but where I live, no, it's not crowded. If you go to Shinjuku Station at 5 p.m., yes, you will. it will be very crowded. But most of the time, ton of space. How much does it cost to move to Japan? Well, <laughs> for me, <laughs> it came with a big cost. <laughs> Japan taxes, uh, it's, uh, it's uh, very strict and uh, that's definitely something I waived while considering moving here. But I made most of my money. It'd be silly for me to not move somewhere because, because of taxes. What is your favorite book on Japanese history, either nonfiction or fiction? I read uh, Sword and Cri Sword, The Sword and Chrysanthemum. I don't know if that's how you say it. It was written by Ruth Benedict, an anthropologist that was hired by the American government during World War II as an attempt to understand the Japanese people and their mindset at the time, which uh, especially then was really hard to understand. It seemed almost contradictory, hence the title Sword and the Flower, basically, Chrysanthemum. Um, how a country can be so hard and soft at the same time, it's, it's two opposites and two contradictions. and sort of breaking that down. Some people will say it's not accurate, some people say it is. Uh, I just find it really interesting because it's generally based on a really really old mindset. Obviously things are different and change. What are you using to learn Japanese? Mainly I'm using Anki which is really good for vocabulary. You basically get a b bunch of flashcards that you make yourself which I like too because then if I want to uh, learn a word I just put it in my own library and the flashcards will repeat them for me. I think it's a fun way to do it. I'm also using Todai, I think it's called. It's an app that lets you read simplified Japanese news. And they have translations and dictionary and uh, yeah, that seems okay for me for now. I'm trying to do stuff that I think is fun. 
and focus on that to be honest so i'll let you know if uh, it's successful or not people get so mad at me for saying that i don't know japanese fluently or like i don't know any japanese i said which wasn't true it's not true i just kind of feel like it doesn't come naturally to me learning japanese and i'd rather downplay <laughs> how much i've actually spent trying to learn japanese and surprise people as opposed to saying yes i've studied so much and but then I can hardly get a sentence out or something like that. And also, like I mentioned in my vlog, people say like, oh, I speak a little bit of English and then they're fluent here. It's just kind of odd to me. So at first, people ask if I speak Japanese, I, I would also say a little. And then it's like, oh God, I don't speak a little. This is impossible. I saw my Reddit, people, someone made, it was just making a joke that, oh, he had three years to wait to move to Japan and he didn't learn the language. He just posted a bunch of memes or something like that. The, the thing is, and I think people don't realize so since this process was so difficult for so long we didn't think we would actually be going I was actually sure that we weren't gonna go for a while so I kind of stopped learning Japanese because I thought well what's the point and if we do end up going I'm just gonna learn quicker if I'm actually there but after a while I decided you know what I actually really enjoy studying Japanese I think it's really fun I read all these uh, things about how good it is for your brain to learn a new language and it's really healthy for you to do. So I thought, you know what, fuck it. Even if we don't end up moving to Japan, I actually still want to learn Japanese because I enjoy doing it. So I would actually recommend people to learn language, not to, I know that sounds preachy for someone that hasn't even learned the damn language yet, but it's fun. I like it. I'm not good, like I said, it doesn't come naturally at all to me. It's completely different than learning a Western language, I think, but it's a challenge and I'm not giving up. <laughs> Anything you miss about Brighton? I, I knew I would miss this and uh, it's seeing the ocean every day. You kind of take it for granted when you do live there though. But uh, yeah, it's uh, it's always nice to see it. It's our language barrier when having a casual conversation, like asking for directions. What kind of shocked me right away is that people speak very fast. <laughs> and even words that I do know, I hear them say it and it doesn't register right away. So it takes me a while. Uh, so yeah, it's difficult. Why do Swedes don't feed guests at home? <laughs> okay. Yes. I've seen this. This is on Reddit as well where someone posted like what was the weirdest thing about different countries culture growing up and someone posted that in sweden when they were a kid and they were hanging out with their friend at their friend's house when it was time to eat he wasn't invited to eat together with the whole family the whole of internet is just shocked and appalled by this that they wouldn't feed their guests and i will agree i it sounds super weird i didn't, I didn't you know there's stuff that you don't realize growing up because you think it's normal everywhere. Just like how Swedish pancakes are Swedish pancakes and not all of Europe pancakes. I remember the, the rules were, if you plan to go to a friend's house in advance, then it's a given that you will eat with, with their family. You know, no questions asked, let's go eat. But if it was decided on the day, hey, uh, my friend is coming over, we're just gonna hang out. They would ask you, okay, do you want to stay over for dinner? And if the answer is yes, then you would have to call your parents and ask your parents, is it okay that I eat over at my friend's house tonight? And then the other option then is if your parents say yes or no, you know, maybe they say no because no, we already uh, bought the food or prepared just the right amount for all of us and you'll just be wasting food if you don't eat with us. So no, you'll eat with us and then it's like, okay, fine. If that's the case, then yeah, you will just wait in the room of your friend while your friend goes down to eat with their family because it would just be kind of weird sitting at the dining table and not eat anything. Plus, it was awesome if your friend had to go and eat. It was like, oh, cool, I'll just keep playing. <laughs> like, I'll just keep playing for 15 minutes. Great. And the other option, I guess, is if your parents say yes, then yeah, you'll just eat with uh, your friend. I don't get it. It sounds really weird to me that someone wasn't at least asked. Like, okay, I'm going to eat now. Do you want to eat with us or are you eating at home? That, that to me sounds weird, although the whole concept of waiting in the room, that's totally a thing. Don't want to be all like, no, Sweden is the most hospital country. I don't think maybe we are, but uh, it does seem kind of odd. That would be a weird thing for anyone, I think, in Sweden. Are you planning to see the real life Gundam in Japan? Uh, yeah, I know they're taking it down in Yokohama, so I really want to see it first. There's another one in Odaiba as well, which I've seen is super cool. But the Yokohama one is supposed to move, which I want to see the moving one. That's the only reason I came to Japan. 
Will you help Connor clean his room? He probably still needs it. <laughs> it's a little weird, but yeah, I would, I would love to. If you raised your kids in Japan, what do you think the first language would be? Oh god, that is a weird one to think about. I guess it would speak Japanese if they went to school, but then they would speak English with us. And Japanese, and Swedish, and Italian. <laughs> ah! <laughs> this poor child. <laughs> What's your definition of a perfect lifestyle? Living your life freely, doing the things that you want to do with no pressure from other people. I think maybe part of growing up you realize that there's so much pressure of what you do. You think it's your own choice, but in reality you made it for someone else. And that's how you end up living your life without even realizing it. So for me the perfect lifestyle would just be uh, living your life the way you want to. Sounds simple, but not always the case. I would say rarely. Okay, I think that's gone long enough. Thank you guys for watching. Super fun to answer your questions. I feel like I look so Swedish here. It's insane. Anyway, I appreciate all the love and support. It really means so much to me. I didn't come here thinking, I'm gonna start vlogging, Japan vlog. Uh, but it's become something really, really fun. And I love, I love all the love. You guys are great. Thank you. Abrufist. <laughs>